Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name.
Oh. 
Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. To look on him and pardon me. Oh, him there, the risen lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable I am, the king of glory and of grace. One with himself I cannot die. on high with Christ my Savior and my God with Christ my Savior and my God sing hallelujah oh Lord, we thank you so much that we have, as we just sang, Lord, a strong and perfect plea. Lord, we thank you that you never see us outside of the righteousness of Christ, Lord, that when we give ourselves to you and we accept that beautiful free gift of salvation, Lord, that you no longer see us as sinful man, Lord, but that you see us robed in the righteousness of Christ. We thank you that, um, that we know that the victory has already been won, and Lord, when, when the enemy comes after us, we know that we can run to you, that you are our fortress, you are our strong tower. We don't have to be afraid because we have you, Lord. We have this beautiful, perfect hope. And so I just pray that our hearts would be encouraged and that this morning, God, that um, if any of us are not feeling well or are sad or having a hard time, Lord, that you would just lift spirits, that you would bring joy and peace. And uh, if anyone here is just overflowing with joy, Lord, that that would just spill out of them and onto everyone around them, Lord, that all of us may be encouraged. And um, we just give you this time in your word now and pray that you would just speak to our hearts, that you would just pull us in, Lord, draw us closer to you and, and um, give us an appreciation for your word and for your presence and for your spirit. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, say hi to somebody.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. It's good to see everybody again. We got home late last night, and we were down in Florida all week, and we come home to this weather. <laughs> but I like it. It's good to be home. I want to clear up a uh, misunderstanding that I th I'm thankful for the ladies of our church. They are very spiritual. And uh, the ladies had their meeting, their prayer meeting, prayer time study on Saturday. And it was brought to our attention that, you know, we just, we just started last month, we started the uh, uh, prayer with the, I mean, uh, lunch with the pastor to get to, new some, get to know some of the new people. Uh, so that just started. So some people saying, how come I get never got invited to that in the past? We didn't have it in the past. <laughs> we just started it. So that's something new. And then the second thing is um, we may have uh, made it sound like it was only for couples to come. Uh, that, that's not just for couples. It's for anybody that's new to the church that wants to come and, you know, sit down. And uh, it's about like maybe a last time. Well, the first one we did was about two hours, I think. But it was a lot of just uh, fellowshipping and just getting to know one another. So that's open to anybody. So when the list comes out, it'll be probably be coming out again, probably for, well, with the holidays coming, I'm not sure when we'll do it again. But when the next one comes out, um, it's not just for couples. It's even if you're single or whatever, whatever your status may be, you're welcome to, you know, put your name down on that list so we can get to know you better. Okay? So thank you, ladies, for bringing that to my attention uh, through my wife. Uh, and then... Um, I also, oh, they want me to remind you again to really emphasize the shoe boxes because Wednesday night, we'd love to have as many people here. Even if you don't usually come on a Wednesday night, you might want to come this Wednesday night because we're going to be packing those shoe boxes. There's going to be pizza and then all those gifts that you've been bringing throughout the year that we've been storing away. We're breaking them out and we're going to be, you know, filling up those shoe boxes. So we need as many people here as possible. Our goal, I think, is 150 shoe boxes. So that's a lot of shoe boxes. So. We want to get as many people here to help do that um, because it's not, it's not work, really. It's really fun, and um, we want to, you know, you know kind of a, it's, a, it's a party kind of a thing, you know. So, uh, we, and we want to pray over those boxes to make sure that the Lord's hand is on them for wherever they go. Uh, it's an awesome thing. I, and I always tell, I tell this story every year. I'm going to tell it again. And it was a story that they, they told us from the Billy Graham Association, um, uh, Samaritan's Purse. There was a... A kid that, that got, um, had, a, had a brother, a twin brother, and the twin brother got sick, and I forget what country they were in, but the twin brother was sick and couldn't go that day that the shoe boxes were going to be handed out to the kids. And so the one boy went, and he got his shoe box, and they could only give you, you know, they couldn't give him one to take home because you had to be there, I guess, is the way it works. But when he opened his shoe box, he started to cry, and so they were like, what's the matter? In the box. There's two of everything. Okay. It's just God's hand, you know. Um, that's why we want to pray. We want to pray for those boxes to make sure they go where the, where the Lord wants them to go, right? Okay. So it's important to be here. Um, and we're going to give you guys, we're going to feed you. All right? We're going to feed you pizza. So... Um, Six o'clock, Calorie Chapel. We're going to yeah. feed you pizza. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to thank you guys for is, um, so we go on the mission trip to Florida, Port Charlotte. But, you know, Bob Mano always says, you know, he calls it the tip of the spear. Those are the, you know, the, when we talk about missionaries, the tip of the spear, those are the ones that go and, they, they, you know, you, you hear and you see about them. But behind them, there's a whole team of people that are enabling those few to go. And so I want to thank the body of Christ here because, well, first I want to thank Brad because Brad's part, part of the team. Brad stepped up to be here on Wednesday night at the pulpit so that I could go. So he stepped in. So thank you, Brad. And you did a great job, too. And then the rest of you guys, you know, when we have mission meals and stuff and you buy those mission meals or you donate for that, that money goes to a missions fund, and we give it out to missionaries, but also we use it for if we, we have a mission trip that helps uh, with the costs of that. So just every time you buy one of those meals or you get one of those meals, then 
that money is going to go to good use. And so we had the money that we could go and send four people to that um, without having a financial burden on anybody. So I thank you, the team here at Calvary Chapel Tri-Cities, because, because of you, we were able to go, we were able to go and help some people that were in need of help down there in Florida. So give yourselves a hand, guys. I appreciate that. Good job. So let's talk about the trip. I want to just share with you, since you're a part of that team, you guys should know what's going on. When you send us, I want you guys to know what, what happened and the results of that. And uh, last year we were at Haiti, we did that. And so you guys saw what happened in Haiti and how we trusted in God and God came through. Well, guess what? God did the same thing again this year. It's amazing. He's always, he always shows up. And so we go down there. We, we traveled last Monday. We drove down and it was a, it took us like 13, 14 hours to get there. And... Um, uh, so we got there late Monday night, and so Tuesday morning, everything started. After we checked in to the church, we slept in kind of the fellowship area. We slept on cots or air mattresses, whatever. And so here we got some slides, so kind of show you through the slides. So let's see what we got. So that was Hurricane Ian. That's the one that caused all the problems in the first place. So that hit last uh, September 28th. It was a Wednesday, and that came in. And if you know where the eye is. Um, there you go. So there's the eye, and then where we were just a little north, like right where that dot is. Can you see the blue, the my dot? We were right there. That's so it got hit pretty bad right there. Okay. So just so you know where we were at. Uh, next picture. Okay. Day one. So that was early in the morning. So it's early in the morning. We wake up. We don't even have uniforms yet, but we do have one guy in the uniform. <laughs> he had to get up before everybody and go help with with Ben. Everybody know Ben? Ben goes to church here. So Ben's the chef, and so he needed one helper. So God has got a sense of humor. I like to cook. And so the, it came out, we need to go help Ben cook. I said, I'm there. I could do it. I get down there. I didn't cook once. <laughs> he had me doing things I hate doing. Yard work. <laughs> so, I don't know. So that was the first day. There's our team, okay? And that's our Calvary people. So next picture. And there's, uh, there's Mark, and the, that's the kitchen. That's their mobile kitchen, an awesome thing there. It, yeah, it's impressive. Next picture. And there they are making eggs in the morning, making a full breakfast so we could be fed before we go out. One of the things Operation Blessing wants to do is, you know, because they're in competition for volunteers with a lot of the big boys, you know, the Billy Graham Association and, and those. And so they try to take real good care of the volunteers to kind of attract volunteers. Three meals a day you get. Three meals a day. And when you're out in the field for lunch, somebody comes out with a hot meal for you. They take a break and have a hot meal. So they really take care of the volunteers. Good organization. Okay, next one. So there's the first street that we turned on that we're going to do work on. And you can see that, you know, it's been September, the end of September, the storm hit. So a lot of places were already cleaning out their houses from flooding and roof damage where the water came in. And so um, this is the first block that we actually did work on. We're going to do uh, on a house over on this side. So next picture. So there we are just, again, there we are doing yard work and uh, fallen trees. And so we had... Uh, you know, we had to cut the trees and then take the debris out to the road because the, the county would come and pick up all the debris and everything. So we had a team of, uh, it was uh, myself, um, Bob, Lorio, and uh, Chris. Where's Chris in the back? And, of course, uh, Mark was at the, Mark stayed back at the, at the headquarters for um, um, the kitchen work. So he was there all day long. So I don't know who worked harder, him or us. He worked longer hours than we did, but... Uh, so next picture, okay, again, just doing yard work, picking up debris and stuff, keep going. And this shed just looked like it blew up, that storm hit it, blew up that shed, and so we had to dismantle it and then take it out to the, to, the, to the curb. Roof damage up here, we were up on the roof fixing, fixing parts of the roof, and uh, that lady's whole house was destroyed on the inside, totally destroyed. And uh, I think the water came up three feet inside the house, and uh, she lives alone, and um, so we, th she was one of the, you, the way that people would do it is that they would call the 800 number. If they had damage, they'd call the 800 number for Operation Blessing, or FEMA would get involved, and FEMA would give out references, that type of thing. So we had a, um, the calls were coming in, and they would log them, and then they would issue out the jobs in the morning. So after breakfast, 
there was a meeting and here's the three jobs you got today with the addresses and what's needed, the person's name and all that information, and then we'd, we'd hit the road. Um, so this was the first house we hit. Next one. And there's Bob there standing there as they're taking that uh, metal. And of course, this is you know sharp edges and things, so we gotta wear all the protective uh, gear and stuff so nobody gets cut up or anything. I don't think, we had one person get hurt while they were there. I think it was either shoulder or back injury from, from carrying stuff, but uh, not on our team, one of the other teams. Next picture. That's after we left the house. Um, just about everything in her house. The team before us had taken most of that out, had cut all the walls out uh, about four feet high and uh, um, removed the, the sheetrock and cleaned that out. But the, we, all, we had to go in and take, uh, Chris was helping take kitchen cabinets out. They had to fix the plumbing there because everything was messed up. To me, they needed to take a bulldozer. But you know, the insurance companies are in, in control and they say this is what you gotta do and we'll fix from here on. So, next picture. So that's there, that's the first house. The guys in blue, that's our team. And we had uh, team members from Florida um, and from Texas with us, uh, not from Texas, from Florida and from Virginia with us. This is the lady who owns the house. She lives there by herself. She was very thankful that we were there to help her. This is her neighbors. Um, they came over and uh, we got an opportunity to pray for all of them and just, just, just have some fellowship time with them. And uh, the guy in the middle is this, this guy here. That's his son and his name is Theo. My grandson's name is Theo. Well, made me miss my grandson. But okay, next picture. That's the kitchen. That's the outside of the kitchen. So this is now day two in the morning. We're getting ready to head out for the next day. Uh, they're expecting the storm to come that night. So some of us were going to go out in the field. They were to keep some back because they had to get the um, the headquarters here locked down because we didn't know how bad that storm was going to hit. It was coming in as a hurricane from the east coast. They said it should probably go to a, to a tropical storm, but they weren't sure of that, so we didn't know what to expect. So um, all this stuff, the first two days we were there, everything got changed because of the storm. Next picture. And there's uh, Mo, Larry, and Curly. <laughs> uh, well, I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> Um, but there, you know, that's uh, at, during breakfast, and then after breakfast, we'll get, we, we get our assignments. There was teams from uh, Calvary Chapel, uh, from, from us, teams from West Virginia. There was a team from uh, Indiana, or a guy from Indiana. There was a team from Texas and Virginia. So we had five states uh, represented there, and um, uh, we had three, basically three teams each day that went out. Three, one team from Texas had a lot of, lot of people. They went, they did mostly the roof work. Uh, then we did all the other kind of work. Uh, and then there was a couple individuals that Operation Blessing, and when they find a church that's going to be their headquarters, they tried to leave the church in better condition than they got there. And so three guys, three older guys, two of them had some electrical knowledge. They rewired part of the, there was a church building on the property that was not being used. So they rewired it for them. So just trying to bless the church who's, who's blessed us. Next picture. And there they are cooking again, man. They're always busy at work. And look at the people in Florida with the jackets. The cold weather was coming in with the storm. And it actually dropped down where we had to wear sweatshirts that day. Next picture. And there's, you can see it. That jumped out on top of, on Chris there. Chris, it was a, it was a, that actually had him and I was, had his tail. And I wouldn't let him go. And then as soon as I let him go, he jumped, jumped onto Chris. But the same, it wasn't the same. It was the house previous to this. The team that got there before us that tore all the walls out, they found a family of rats living in the wall. And the mama rat jumped on one of the ladies. <laughs> and um, I'm glad I wasn't there. But, but we just got a lizard. So, But we were watching for the other crawly things that Florida has in the debris, but we didn't come across any. All right, next picture. You see the boat here that came off the, uh, it was, it was kind of like, it was like that at one point, but the storm knocked it, and there was a whole bunch of them like that. And Chris came across, uh, Chris and his, when they were, they went to pick up some stuff, some supplies at Lowe's, and they saw a uh, sailboat sunk. So there's, there's all kinds of, you know, as you're driving around, you're seeing all different things, you know. Um, some of the stuff has been cleaned up already, but there's a lot of stuff. It, it'll be year, like a year or so before everything's cleaned up. Next picture. And there we are fixing, a, this is another house, and this is uh, 
we're fixing part of the roof. This is a screened enclosure. It was a screened enclosure. And it's, uh, we had to tear some of the roof of that off, and then we had to fix part of that roof, the, the, the house roof. And um, uh, again, another elderly lady lives by herself. Her husband had passed. She's there by herself, and she called to see if the church could help her. So, and that was, a that was a tough job. That was hard to do, that one. Next one. There's our team that was there, and this is the owner of the house. Very nice lady, and uh, I had we, the team, had an opportunity to pray with her. And uh, she was just, you know, blessed that we were. The, the funny thing was, you know, all the work orders that came in, they were dwindling down, and the people thought we were, most of the people that we went to said, oh, we didn't think you guys were coming. Because it was the end, of, I guess they gave them a time frame that we would get these jobs done, and it went over the time frame, so they figured we would never show up. So these are the last days that, were, that Operation Blessings even there. And so everybody was really blessed that we showed up unexpectedly to help. All the jobs got done except for one, and it was one where it was a flooding and we would have to go and tear out the walls and demuck the place. But the reason we couldn't do it, the insurance adjuster had not gotten there yet, and you can't touch anything until they get there. So she's waiting on them, and it, it's, it's sitting, and I don't know if they're going to, they're pulling out next week. There's no more volunteers coming in. We were the last crew coming in, so don't know what's going to happen. So next picture. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, um, we were getting calls from loved ones back in Tennessee. Hey, the storm's coming in, the storm's coming in. What are you guys doing? So we, we, we texted them back. It's, it's already here. Storm's <laughs> here, but we're, we're hanging on. Next one. So here comes Tropical Storm uh, Nicole. It hit on the East Coast as a hurricane, and then as it came across, it came across and went upward, so we got the tail end of it. We just got winds and rain. Um, the rain came down hard, the rain, but that stopped everything we could do Thursday. We couldn't go out Thursday, but we stayed at the church and did work at the church and odd jobs and things like that on Thursday. So, but we, lived, we, we went through that one. Next one. And there's dinner that, that same night after the storm has gone, and now we're chowing down. And you see that uh, everything was kind of changed from the first pictures because everything was moved around by, you know, because of the storm, and now we try to put it back so we get some kind of normalcy again. And here's, uh, she's from Texas, 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 and him, I think it looks familiar. <laughs> yeah. And there's our cook, there's their chef again. So next one. Next morning, breakfast again. They were cooking eggs to order, right? Eggs to order. We had the French toast, and we had bacon every day, guys. <laughs> bacon every day. Thick cut bacon. Not the thin stuff. Thick cut bacon. So we ate well. Next one. I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to see. I tried to blow it up. The, these cranes, there's cranes building this building, but one of the cranes failed, and it came down, and there's all damage in here to the building. We, there's, the police are out there uh, when we were there, and uh, there's tow trucks, and so I guess they're trying to, trying to fix that area. But uh, just another thing of the damage that happened uh, from one of the storms. Okay. Next one. There we are on one of our uh, next houses that we did, and there was roof work to be done. And uh, this lady, see, this is part of the pool enclosure. Where I'm standing under, by the pool underneath the uh, enclosure. She had just got that thing done two months ago. Oh, wow. And the storm came and took some of it out, took the roof out. And so Chris and um, John, one of the guys from uh, Virginia, he's up on. Guys, a pilot from the Air Force. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? Bob? Was Bob? Maybe you know him, Bob. Okay, next picture. And this is the owner of the house. Her name is Camille. Guess where she's from? She's a New Yorker. <laughs> so we hit her off, right? Yeah. The cool thing, they were doing work and we were talking. <laughs> so we talked for all about New York and everything and uh, lovely lady and we just, we just hit it off good. So I'm going to continue to keep Camille in prayer. Is she tired of Florida now? Yeah. <laughs> I told her to come to Virginia. I mean, come to Tennessee and uh, join us. And, um, but she's got family down there. You see that part of the fence behind her? That's her fence. That's like the only part that's standing. The rest of it's all down. Yeah. Next picture. And this tree damage against one of the neighbors. That we were working on a house right here. That was the neighbor's house. Um, so you see, it's going to be a long time before they get cleared out. Next picture. 
It's, that's another neighbor's house, another debris that's being taken out. And this is what they were doing on a lot of roofs, putting up the tarps. FEMA gives the tarps out, and then we were taking them, putting them up on the roofs. And um, depending on what kind of roof it was, if, it's, if it was a slate roof, they put sandbags on to hold the tarps down to keep the water from getting in. And uh, if it was a tile roof, then uh, they were nailing them to the, to, the, uh, to the ceiling. Okay, next one. There's our team again, just, just about, I guess this was actually at the beginning this picture was done. We were all smiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. So, so the boys were good. We drove through Orlando to come back home. And of course, in Orlando, you start to see all the signs for all the touristy things. The boys were getting excited. I had to tell them, calm down, calm down. I'm taking you to a special place. We got through Orlando, and then we pulled into Bucky's, and you should have seen the excitement from the guys. They were so excited that I took them to their favorite place, and guess who we got to meet? Next picture. We got to meet Bucky. Isn't that better than Mickey? And notice we all got Bucky's to take home in the car. So, but we give all the thanks to you guys for helping us to get there with your financial donations and your prayers. And of course, from this next picture, we give all the praise to the Lord, right? That was at church. We had been passing by and uh, on our way to one of the jobs, and I happened to catch it. And I said, look, and we had to make a U-turn to come back, and then we all wanted to get out and take pictures with it. So. That was, that's in front of a church. It's a big table. There's Jesus uh, breaking the bread, and uh, there's the cup, sharing communion. So, And then uh, Bob took a picture of me, I think is the last one. There we are. So thank you, Lord. Good time, good time. A lot of, a lot of good prayers being said, a lot of people being prayed for. Um, it's awesome to see, again, the team. You, you're a part of the team that sends us. All the other churches, you know, Virginia, Texas, that sent people, and, you know, that's only the tip of it, right? Who knows how many other churches were involved in sending people? And so um, it's, a, it's awesome to see in the midst of a storm the body of Christ come together. So, and then the fellowship. The fellowship of the Christians from different places, black, white, Hispanic, it didn't matter. We were all brothers and sisters in Christ. So... It was a blessing. We go to bless, and the Lord blesses us. You know, so. Let's pray. Father, we want to just give you all thanks and glory, Lord. We, we thank you for the body of Christ here at Calvary Chapel, Lord. What an awesome body it is. Brothers and sisters unified in, in oneness. And Lord, we, we thank you for the willingness to uh, be able to go out and to serve uh, your, your people. Not only your people, Lord, but others who need to know the love of Christ. And so as we do that, Lord, I pray that you continue to use us for, for your glory. I pray you would continue to send us out, Lord, that we again would, would have more people who would want to volunteer to be the, the head of the spear, to actually go out to make those contacts, Lord, to take the time. And sometimes it does take a, uh, uh, something from us, Lord. It takes uh, uh, just a time. And uh, Lord, but as we des desire to bless others, you bless us. And so we're so grateful for that, Lord. Thank you for blessing our church. Thank you for blessing the teams and keeping us all safe, Lord. And now we ask you to bless our Bible study, Lord. We continue to come before your throne, Lord. And uh, we ask for your wisdom, your, your guidance. And so, Lord, uh, again, just thank you, thank you, thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's go to 2 Peter. We'll continue our, our verse by verse study of the second epistle of Peter. Now, you remember in the first chapter that we went through, verse by verse, we studied it well. And as we went through it, we see that Peter was trying to encourage the church. Who was he encouraging? Christians that had gone, Jewish converts that had gone and been dispersed because of the persecution. Okay, so they're all over, and he's writing this letter, how to live godly lives amongst the persecution, amongst strangers, amongst being living in the world. And so certainly this is a message that uh, is important for us because that's exactly what we're doing. We're living at a time where there's persecution coming. And uh, we, we didn't get a whole lot of news down there, so I kind of 
you know, I had voted before I left, and the whole team had voted early voting so we could get our votes in. And uh, trying to get information back, it was kind of hard to really find out what was going on, but I, I think we didn't do so well in the elections. And uh, so I'm kind of thinking persecution is definitely coming, okay? So it's important that we know how, how, do we, how do we stand during persecution? That's what Peter's trying to share with us. Uh, he's, he's assuring them that God has given believers everything that we need to live a victorious life no matter what the circumstance is. Okay, and I, I think of these people in the storm, coming out of that storm like that one lady's house, totally, completely destroyed. You know, how does she have strength, you know, to carry on? And she's, you know, she has really no, she's got a sister that lives in the area, but uh, you know, basically she's on her own. And uh, we had a, a fellow that was there from West Virginia. His name was Russ. He's an older guy. He just lost his wife a month ago. And he's by himself. And so every time he talked about his wife, he'd, he'd break up, you know, break down and tear. But um, he was there to help. You know, he's a Christian. He's a Christian brother. And uh, he says, well, my wife is gone. I'm alone. I might as well do the work of the Lord. And so we compared him to Paul. You know, Paul said, hey, if you're single, you know, that's a good thing because now you could de dedicate yourself to serving the Lord. And so that was his desire. That was his heart to, to, do, to do that. And so Peter is telling us that we've got everything we need, okay? No matter what trials are coming, what temptations may come, we have everything. And in verse 3 of chapter 1, just to paraphrase, it said that God's divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through our knowledge. Again, he uses the word knowledge quite a bit in this, in this book. The knowledge of him, the knowledge of Jesus who called us by glory and, and virtue that we may escape the corruptions of the world. So the Lord has given us everything, but we have to have knowledge. And so part of being able to stand, especially during difficult times, is to be able to have knowledge. And so the knowledge comes from, as we said last week, and in, in the last two weeks, we emphasized knowledge by being a student of the word, actually being the Berean, I said, right? Not only just taking my word for what I'm saying, but then going home and revisiting what I've, we've talked about and see for yourself what God tells to you, what God speaks to your heart. And so that's, what P, that's Peter's thing is to have knowledge, Okay, because we're going into chapter 2, and he's going to talk about false teachers, false prophets, false doctrine. And we talked about, we had a picture of a $20 bill, and I said, how do you know the real from the fake? Well, you, you know, the only way to compare, you compare the two, and when you know what the, what the real is, what it looks like, then you'll know what the fake, when it's a fake. And so it's the same thing. We take that same thinking here into Scripture. When we know the Scriptures and we know what the Bible says, we have knowledge, then when somebody gives us a line that doesn't line up with Scripture, that's going to be what, a red flag to us. And we're going to say, hold on, where are you coming up with that? Right? And then we could look into it and see if it's, if it's, a, if it's of, uh, of God or not. And so we want to increase our knowledge of the Lord. And so we want to be here for Bible studies. We want to be in the Word. We want to go home and we want to double check what we've heard in church, what we heard in the Bible study, just to make sure that we're clear and we know that we're, we're hearing truth and not false doctrines or lies or even mis sometimes a mistake will, will seep in, okay? Now, if it's a mistake, that's one thing, right? We want to, but we should correct that mistake. And I've done that in the past. I may have said something. Somebody comes up to me and says, you know, you said this. And I said, well, that's not what I meant, but that's the way it came out. So I'll come back the next week and say, hey, let's revisit what we said last week and just correct that. Okay? So it's important that we do that. So the best way to determine what's counterfeit is to know the genuine, know what's real so you can make that comparison. And so we want to have a good knowledge of the scriptures, which is the genuine thing. The things that we've heard from the beginning, he says, the things that we know, right? And then Peter says, and I want you to know I'm telling you these things because I was an eyewitness to the things of Jesus Christ. I was there with him. And he gives us the example of the, what? Transfiguration. The transfiguration up on the mountain, right? He says, I was there when that happened. I saw Jesus, and I saw what happened. I saw him glowing. I saw him transfigured. And then I heard the voice from heaven. It was God. I, we, we all heard God's voice. This is my son, right? He said. So I'm, I'm an eyewitness, I'm, I'm a good, I'm accountable to what I'm telling you, this is true. And then he even goes in a step further, what's even better than that, you've got the prophets, all those witnesses that heard the voice of God, were loyal to the voice of God, and then wrote it down for us that we would have this for all generations. And he says, so you've got all that, okay? That's what we should be going on. 
what the what, what the what the apostles who were witnesses saw and wrote for us, and what all the um, prophets prior to them heard, saw, and wrote for us. And God has been the one who has held the Bible together for us for all these generations, right? So praise God for that, that we know the truth. And the truth shall what? Set us free. Set us free. Okay. And so it's just a few years after the ministry of Christ that now the church is already having some issues within the church. There's false teachers coming in. Are they doing it out of a lack of knowledge? Possibly. Are they doing it uh, out of wanting to deceive people? More probably. And so if they're doing it tomorrow to, to deceive the people, to deceive the church, these new believers, who do you think is behind that? It's definitely Satan's behind that. Satan wants to destroy the early church before it takes off, right? We've got to put a stop to it. He's been trying to stop the child from being born, the, the baby Jesus, right? He's, he's tried to destroy the Jewish nation so that the Christ could not come through them. And so now the church is established. And so now, okay, well, now i got to battle that, he says. And so he tries to shut the church down by bringing in false teachers and false doctrines. And so let's take a look. Chapter 2, verse 1. Peter continues what he's speaking about. And he says, but there were also false prophets among the people. He's talking about now the past. He, sa he says, okay, amongst the people, the Israel, amongst Israel, throughout our history, we've had false teachers come in, okay? So he's reminding them of that. And then he says, even as there will be false teachers among you. So he points to the past and he says, there was false prophets, just like there's going to be now false teachers amongst you. And he's speaking to the Christian church. So he's saying, expect false teachers, who will creep into the church. And now things haven't changed in 2,000 years, so we still, today, we still have to be on guard for a false teacher coming into the church. Right? Yes. Okay. So we want to be on guard for that. And so we see so many churches, so many denominations that have broken off have split. Why? Because somebody comes in with a different doctrine, a different idea, some different thoughts, and people then adhere to that, and because they don't adhere to the, what's already been established, they end up breaking off, right? And so we see so many denominations, they're splitting, and, and that's really, it's all that, all that is is a, a battle plan of divide and conquer. and conquer, okay? And so we see that. We're so blessed that we had an opportunity, instead of to divide and conquer, we had an opportunity to bring two churches together, to merge two churches, okay? So let's turn to 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul is writing to young Timothy. Everybody there? He tells, he reminds Timothy, he says, be diligent. What does diligent mean? What? Attention, be on guard, work hard. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Now, remember, who is Timothy is a young pastor. So Paul is telling him, be diligent to present yourself approved of God. In other words, make sure you are speaking truth because God is going to approve it, right? And so that marching order for young Timothy goes really to all pastors and teachers that we all should be diligent to present ourselves approved to God, a worker who does not, be, does not need to be ashamed. Why don't we need to be ashamed? Because we are rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, that's my job responsibility is to rightly divide the word of truth and give it to you as best I can within my abilities with God's help to make sure I do that and I stay faithful to the word. Verse 16, but shun, okay, profane and idle babblings. What is he talking about? To, to shun something means to what? Turn your back, not pay attention to those things. So turn your back from profane and idle babblings, things, things that are not scripturally sound, okay? For they will increase to more ungodliness. Well, sure they will because you're being led astray, okay? So here's an example, and I, I take this from personal experience as a Boy Scout leader teaching young Boy Scouts and using your compass. If my goal is to hit a certain point on the map, and I'm starting here, if I am one degree off here, by the time I go a mile out, guess how far off the mark I am? Really? Miles, yeah. okay, by one degree here at the beginning. So it's the same thing here. If we are one degree off, and you're hearing idle babblings and stuff that's not biblical here, and it's just one little degree off, it could bring you miles away from where you need to be. 
And remember, we all are on a what kind of path? It's a narrow path. And then the Lord say that only a few find it. So we better make sure that when we're hearing from here is right on mark. Okay? Because we want to make sure we're getting truth. And so be uh, uh, shun profane idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. If you're not getting the truth, you, it's going to lead you to ungodliness. Okay? And their message will spread like what? Gangrene. Gangrene? Mine says cancer. That's how bad it's going to be. Paul goes on to say, now just flip over one chapter, it's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Paul is going on again, more warning to young Timothy and to the church. He says, but evil men and apostles will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So notice what he says, they will grow worse. I mean, that means over time. And so it's probably worse today than it was back then even. Okay? Evil men and imposters. So this, he's talking about evil men. He's not talking about somebody that was misinformed. He's talking about evil men, imposters. They're going to get worse and worse. They're going to dece be deceiving. And then look at the other word, being deceived. Okay? So there's going to be people deceiving, and there's going to be people being deceived by hearing those idle babblings. Verse 14, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from, from whom you have learned them. And so verse 14 says, hey, you learned them from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit give you these things. God preserved these words for us. This is what we know. And he says, stick to this. Check everything. Okay, go back to this. This is where the truth comes from. Continue in those things, what you've already learned and that you've been assured of. How have we been assured? By the witnesses. The witness of Peter, he's an eyewitness. Paul's an eyewitness, right? We have John's an eyewitness. These guys are eyewitnesses giving their accounts. We have the prophets. We've got the voice of God from heaven speaking. And so these are the things. We know these things. We've learned from them, and we trust in these things. Why would we change? That's the question. Why do we change? Why do you see people come in, and, you know, we have people that they, they church shop. They come into a church. We're just checking it out. And we, week after week, we give the word of God, right? We, we, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, the whole counsel of God, we give it. And then we hear, well, you don't have this, or I don't like that. I don't like the color of the rug. Okay, so, so big deal. So now what? Well, we're going to go to where everybody else is going. Yeah, but what are they teaching there? Yeah, oh, you know, they don't, eat, they don't think of that. It's just something they don't like. Well, they don't like the pastor. He's got, his hair's too long. His hair's too short. He's got a tattoo. He's fat. Get over it. Think of Paul. The other Paul. <laughs> they say he was a stubby, little, ugly-looking guy, but he brought truth, right? Verse 15, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which right now he's talking to Timothy who, who was brought up, right, by his, his mom and his grandma uh, learning these things. He says, from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Sometimes we have to have that little step of faith, okay? I had to have a step of faith. I had a hard time with in the beginning. In the beginning God created and he created all in six days on the seventh day he rested. And, you know, I thought I was too smart for that. Well, I look at creation, and, you know, it had to take thousands, millions of years, and I was into the science thing, right, because I like science. And I had a hard time believing that. And a pastor told me, well, if you have a hard time believing that, you know, why would you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? That goes against science. And I had to think about it. He says, if you could get past, in the beginning, you will have no problem having faith in the whole, in the whole Bible. And I finally gave that up to the Lord. I said, okay, Lord, if you're telling me you did this in six days, who am I to question? Uh, by faith, I believe that, and I will teach that. And all of a sudden, man, things started to change in my life as far as my spiritual walk. And so that's what, that's what, that's what Paul has reminded Timothy. You know the scriptures. They're able to make you wise for salvation through faith. You've got to have faith. This is a, our, our, our religion is about faith in God. Okay? Having faith, which is in Christ Jesus, the Son of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So if you want to be thoroughly equipped for every good work, what do you got to do? Read the Bible, have faith in God. It's that simple. Just have faith. Okay? If the Bible says it, have faith that it's true. Because these guys that wrote this were inspired by God. God spoke to them. They wrote it down for us. 
okay? And so we have to have faith. And I hear so many people say, well, you know, there's so many different guys writing these things. That's the point. When you have so many different guys and they're writing different things from their points of view and it all comes out to the same story, there's got to be some power behind that, Amen. right? And so that's exactly right. So we're to, so Peter is being, I mean, uh, Paul is reminding Timothy of these things. He's reminding us of the church. We know these things. And so Peter begins to now kind of, he's picking up on that same thing. And again, here's a different guy, right? A different guy speaking these things. And we've heard from Timothy. We, we'll tie, read Titus. Titus is, is almost the mirror image of this because Titus is teaching the same, I'm not Titus, Jude, I'm sorry, Jude. Jude is teaching the same stuff. Okay, and so we, we, we're hearing the same thing over and over again from di different guys, from different points of view, because God has put this on their hearts. And so, the false prophets will be among you, okay? According to the scriptures, they're always going to be a problem, okay? We're always going to have them, so we all, all ought to be on guard for them, okay? They claim to speak on behalf of God, but in reality, they're not because they're not speaking truth. God is not going to give us a lie. God cannot lie. So Jeremiah 14, 14 gives us kind of an example. Of, well, it, gives, it shows us God's heart, okay? There's coming judgment. They're speaking about judgment and stuff. And here's, here's what, the Lord, what the Lord says to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 14, 14, the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them commanded them nor spoken to them they prophesy to you a false vision divination a worthless thing and the deceit of their heart the deceit of their heart okay and so the lord is warning us too not just peter and not just um, uh, timothy and paul but the but god himself is telling us that there is going to be false teachers who deceive or out to deceive us and so we have false prophets and false teachers, okay, they, where do they get their source of information? It's not coming from Scripture. It's coming from somewhere else. It's either coming from their own, their own deprived heart or their mind, or maybe there's another spirit speaking to them, all right? Because didn't, wasn't there a, a guy that was in the garden or a, a devil that was in the garden that took the word and said to Eve, is that really what God said? Isn't this is what he said? And he just... Twist it a little bit. There's that one degree off. And what happened? Sin enters the world, right? Because she was deceived by just a little degree of false coming into the word. And she ends up doing what she did. She takes the fruit, passes it on to her husband, and sin enters the world. So we have to be careful. Even if it's one simple thing, one degree off, it's no good. Speak, uh, speaking to the church and to believers... Be warned, there are going to be false teachers. Be careful who you listen to on the radio. Be careful who you watch on TV. And YouTube. And YouTube. And YouTube. Yeah, and YouTube. And churches that you may visit. Okay? So be careful. Peter reveals to us what happened to Israel is going to happen in the church. Okay? The Lord just warned us about the prophets. Peter's now saying, hey, what happened back then? is going to happen here in the church with false teachers bringing false doctrines. They're going to teach destructive heresies. Let's take a look. Let's go back to 2 Peter. We're still in verse 1. Okay, even as there will be false teachers among you, he says, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who, brought, who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. So notice that these false teachers who are among you will secretly bring in destructive heresies. So he's not, they're not going to come in and say, hey, I've got a new gospel. Well, you know what? It's gotten so bad that some even say that now. Some even say that they were, you know, in, God spoke to them, and this is a new, uh, new idea or whatever they, whatever they say. So they're even that much bolder now that they'll, they'll just come out and say, this is a new thing. So we're being warned about this. They will secretly bring in destructive heresies. What's a heresy? An untruth, a falsity. And the one who teaches a heresy is called a heretic. heretic okay? So we, these false teachers are heretics bringing in these false lies, um, even denying the Lord, even to that extent that they deny the Lord, that the Lord is Jesus, that the Lord is the Messiah, the Lord Jesus is Messiah. They'll deny that. Can, without saying out loud, can you think of any religions that do that? 
Jesus is not the son of God, he's, or he's, he's the brother of the devil, and he's, you know, all that stuff. Lies? Yes. And can we take those lies back in history and see where they came from? You know, and then when you look at the character of the one guy, um, he's got an arrest history, and it's about some fraud, and, and, you know. So here's a guy that's charged with fraud, convicted of fraud. You know, what does fraud mean? He's being deceived, and then he writes a whole religion, and people are buying into it, you know? It's, to me, it's like, I don't understand that. And it goes against what the scriptures say, right? So we have to be careful. So, guys, while I was away, I really sought the Lord a lot. And he spoke to me. It was the night of the storm. And the other guys were sleeping. And he spoke to my heart. And he said, Paul, I want you to start telling the people you can be saved if you're just a good person. That's what the Lord said to me. Yeah. What would you guys do? You guys ought to be running out that back door. <laughs> that is heresy, and I am then a heretic. Because we know darn well that the Bible says that the only, you know, we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? So that's just an, a, an example. I hope when they tape that, they listen to the whole tape. Yeah. My luck, they'll turn it on and listen to that point and go, oh my gosh, what is Calvary Chapel doing? I'll be getting a call from Sandy Adams. What are you doing down there? Sometimes on face value, it sounds good. Because that, doesn't that sound good? To, to the untrained ear? Hey, a good person could go to heaven. That's the easy path. The easy path, yeah. But that leads to, so that's off a little bit. So now you get somebody that comes and says, well, I'm a good person. That means, I'm, oh, I'm saved. And now they're happy. Right? And now they're not seeking the Lord because they don't think they have to. Now, when time comes and they perish, what's going to happen to them? It's going to be judgment because of that person who told them that and led them to believe that. And so, uh, you know, it's, well, we'll get into more in a minute. So the enemy is cunning and shrewd. We see that through, through Scripture. We see the enemy, the devil, how he was. Um, He'll use good men with good character to deceive us, won't he? You know, you'll get a pastor up there and you think, let me tell you, I went to a church in New York and in Florida, um, not a Calvary Chapel, of course, but where I trusted in the guys that were holding mass. I trusted them. I think, well, they're, they've been trained. They know what they're speaking about. And for many years, we went to that church until, you know, there was... A trial in my life, and I started seeking truth, and come to find out stuff they're teaching is not scriptural. Now, had I stayed in that religion, never getting saved because they don't, you don't do that in that religion, that's leading me to what? Eternity in hell. Shame on them. That's why the Bible says if you're a teacher, you're going to be judged at a higher degree, because God knows that what you're teaching could mean eternal life or death, right? So the enemy is going to use even good men of good reputation to feed into them some things that they could teach. So he's, again, he's manipulating people in order to destroy the church and destroy lives. He wants people to teach false doctrines. They themselves are being deceived. I had an uncle that was one of those guys that were teaching in that church. And I had a discussion with him one time. And he was solid on... I'm wrong, and he's right. Couldn't break, you know, break his, his belief system. Kind of like brainwashed, I would say. You know, brainwashed into that. And so Peter's declaring that these false teachers will bring upon themselves destruction, okay? Those who deny the Lord who bought them. Notice what he says, who bought them. What does that mean, who bought them? Christ is the one that redeemed them back, Right? He redeems us back. So he's talking about here these guys that are denying the Lord who bought them. These are people that were possibly heard the truth, the truth of the, being redeemed, redemption, being uh, salvation, and yet they now deny that, okay? And I think the Lord says something about that. He says, you know, they, you know, um, 
once you're saved, if you go back, it's worse than if you never were saved, right? And that's kind of what it's saying. And so they bring upon themselves swift destruction. In other words, there's going to be judgment coming upon those teachers. Destructive. Paul writes a warning to the church. Again, he's writing to 2 Timothy, uh, to Timothy in 2 Timothy. The time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. There's a time coming, and I think we're there, where people want to hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear the truth because the truth well, what does the truth do to us? It convicts us. We don't like to feel convicted. Um, it's offensive to some. Well, that's offensive to my lifestyle. Yeah, but it's the tr truth. It's if, you were, if you're willing to receive it, okay? And so they are willing to gather around a great number of teachers who will say what they want to hear. And so when you, church, when you hear about somebody church shopping, it's the first thing I think of. They're church shopping. They're look, not looking for see who's got the best playground or who's got the best uh, uh, fellowship hall. They're looking to hear, what is the pastor teaching and is he teaching what I want to hear? Because I really don't want to hear the truth because the truth is offensive and convicting. And I don't want to hear that. And that's a shame because destruction is coming. Paul warns the church here, men need to put up with sound doctrine. Okay, if you think about it, if, if men and women put up with sound doctrine, would our nation be in the condition that it's in today? No, it would not be. And so we need to get back to it. And we talked about revival shortly last week a little bit. Revival starts in all of our individual hearts. It doesn't happen in a church. It's individual. We've got to say in our heart, you know what? This is the truth. This is what I'm going to try to live my best by, and this is what I'm going to believe in. Okay, all that other stuff is all nonsense. And we got to, can't be afraid to say it. Yeah, but there's persecution coming. So who's going to be afraid to say it when persecution comes? I was warned not too long ago to be careful how I say when I talk about spiritual warfare and certain things. And I'm like, what, what do you mean, be careful? I'm just the truth. So should I be careful and guard what I say if I'm, well, should I not say the truth? I don't think so. And that, that comes down to you guys because you guys are all part of this, right? You all put your faith in Christ and Christ has called us to this. And so you've got to be the same way. You've got to be willing to stand on what you believe in, on your faith. Yeah. Put, let's put up with sound doctrine. Some are looking for charming sermons rather than challenging sermons. Some are looking to be entertained on Sunday mornings, okay? Some of those big churches, they're really entertaining. You look like, it's like you're going to a concert. Hey, where do I get a ticket? Where do we buy tickets? You know, we want to hear the big, the lights and the smoke and the, you know, the dancing around on the stage as they're singing and they're waving the flags and stuff like that. You know, and it's all music and it's good music and stuff. And then the pastor gets up and says, you're a good people, we're all going to heaven together, praise God. Sound, sound doctrine? No. But it was entertaining. Um, don't be so preachy, t uh, Pastor. You know, just try to please us. We want to hear something good today. You know, we don't want to hear about sin. We don't want to hear, you know, there's that one of the biggest churches, the pastor said with a big smile, I don't speak about sin. Sin kind of brings things down. Let's not talk about that. And he's, and he's, in, a, he's, in, a, he's in a basketball arena and the place is packed. People will gather around, pastors and teachers who speak what they want to hear. Pastor, today, it's been a rough week. Can you just make me kind of feel good today? Lift me up. Make me feel good. Don't make me feel uncomfortable. Dan, don't convict me of my sins. What sins? No words. That's word. And so we have false teachers. Who, why would a false teacher be willing to do that? Well, we'll get into that more next week. We're going to really, gonna, let me go one more verse. Um, and many will follow the destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. And so what verse, verse two is saying is many will follow those destructive heresies and those heresies, those lies, they blaspheme the truth of God's word. Okay. They discredit God's word. They go against God's word. And unfortunately, many will buy into that. 
because that's what they want to hear. The itchy ear wants to hear that, all right? Verse 3, but covetousness, they, by covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. By co- that gives you the clue to their motive. If I don't speak about sin and I don't convict anybody, I make everybody feel happy. And I stand here with a smile and, you know, I got the glow behind me and I wear nice suits. And we just speak about nice things and everybody leaves happy. Look how big the place is growing. Everybody wants to be happy, right? And so let's make the place bigger. Uh, the tithe boxes, make them bigger. We need more money. My jet, it's a year old. I need a new one. And so why, what does it say there? The Lord, the, why they covet. What do they covet? Power, position, Money, fame, fortune, you name it. Can you imagine jet jetting throughout over the world, you know, in your own private jet? You know, that'd be great. Anybody feeling ill today? Anybody got a disease? Come on up here, I'll, 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 slay, I'll slay you and you'll be healed. Oh, not you, we don't know who you are, but come on up here, man. So they lie. They, they, they lie and they deceive and people who are seeking fall into it because they so want to believe something. When my son Michael had that tumor in his head, there was a, uh, again, this is before we were believers, there was a priest coming around and he had a healing ministry and was advertised, well, guess what? We went, took our son so that he could pray over our son. Hope, we're hoping that that tumor could be removed, you know, healed. And so we bought into it. We went down there and saw all the craziness going on, you know. Um, we were right there. Take, pray over them, you know, do whatever you got to do because we so wanted something good to come out of it, right? People will be willing to do that. And so what does it say there? Um, they will exploit you with deceptive words. That's really what it came down to. You know, because you got to give a donation. You know, got to give the donation. So they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and the destruction does not slumber. The Lord is reminding us. He says, hey, this is going to go on. I'm telling you now. Have a good understanding of the Scripture. Be on the guard for that. But know this. Yeah, it seems like it continues to go on and on. It's 2,000 years. It's been going on and on. It's getting worse. But the Lord says what? I'll take care of it. In my timing, I'll take care of those people. Okay, I'll take care of those, those guys. The false teachers and the false uh, doctrines, I'll take care of those things. I do not slumber, he says. And then we'll stop there. And then we'll pick this up next week in verse 4. And we'll can continue through um, because the slide presentation took some time. But I wanted to because you're a part of that, and so I wanted you to see that. I wanted you to be praying for, like, Camille, that lady we saw there, and the gentleman, Russ. He's the one who just lost his wife, but he's there serving. Um, be praying for all those that lost stuff in, in, the, in the hurricane. Be praying for the church in general. The church is an awesome thing. You know, the different denominations, it's all God's church, and it was just kind of neat to see different denominations come together and work together you know, shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand, and uh, accomplish what God wants to get done. So just think about what the church can do if we were unified, you know. Um, so keep the church in prayer. I'll close with this verse. Oh, there's so many good ones. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, let me go over here. What is the will of God? We've, we, people always ask that. What is the will of God? And I, I know you can go to different verses because it's different in different places. You know, it's different like parts of the will of God. But to go along with the message today, he says in John 6, 28 and 29, 
The question is, what is the will of God? And John kind of responds. Uh, he's talking to a couple guys, and he says, believe in the one who sent me. This is Jesus, right? He's quoting Jesus. Believe in the one who sent me. Basically, the, the, what God is saying is that we are called to have faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, he is the Savior of the world. God sent him to be the what for our sins? The what? Propitiation. Propitiation of our sins. He took our place. He's how we get saved. He's the one that reveals truth to us. He takes the scales from our eyes so we could have truth. He's the one that gives us knowledge and wisdom. He gives us the Holy Spirit that's inside of us that guides us and directs us. And so I close with that thought. Have faith in my son. He goes on to say in 1 John 3, he says, His commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another just as he commanded us. If we do that, I think we'll have a good, good defense against false teachers, false doctrines. And remember, it's only going to get worse. So as things get worse, we need to get stronger. Amen? Amen. So let's be students of the word. Let's pray. Father, we want to just thank you for all things, Lord. You are such a good and gracious and loving God. We thank you for all those things, all the blessings, Lord. We thank you for bringing back the team safely. We thank you for the team behind the scenes who were praying for us, Lord, and who helped finance that. And Lord, we just, we just thank you for being able to share the love of Christ with other people. Lord, I pray that those people who received those blessings, Lord, I pray that they would look up and realize that those blessings came from you. May you change hearts that need to be changed, Lord. Will you touch hearts that need to be touched? Will you bring peace and comfort to those who need it? And Lord, we just pray that you continue to use us. We desire to be faithful to you, faithful to the truth, no matter what comes our way. So Lord, we ask for your spirit to strengthen us, to embolden us, and to give us faith. We thank you, Lord. We ask all these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 Why don't we all stand and we will close and sing together, praising the Lord.
You guys have a blessed weekend. Uh, we got the prayer team coming up here. If you guys need prayer, feel free to come up here. Otherwise, enjoy your fellowship. <laughs>